You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, we'll call this meeting of the Brantford Planning Zoning Commission to order. It is April, Thursday, April 4th, 2024. I have 7.03 p.m. I'll introduce members of the commission and staff. Joe Chadwick, commission member. Joe, are you here? Joe Chadwick is present. Thank you, Joe. Fred Russo. Fred, are you here? Fred Russo is present. Joe Bayuso. Joe, are you here? Joe Bayuso here. Thank you, Joe. Marcy Pelusi, Marcy, are you here? Marcy Pelusi is here. Massimo Ligari, Massimo, are you here? Massimo Ligari is here. Thank you, Massimo. Sharon Hutner, Sharon, are you here? Sharon Hutner is here. And our staff this evening is our town planner, Harry Smith. Harry, are you here? I am here. Our assistant planner, Evan Brining. Evan, are you here? Here. And our clerk recording secretary lurking out there is Michelle Martin. And I am Chuck Anders chair. Uh, at this point, I'll ask, uh, do we have a notice of public hearing to read? Fred? Yes. <clears throat> uh, legal notice, Town of Brantford. The Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Brantford, Connecticut, hereby gives notice of public hearings to be held on Thursday, April 4th, 2024 at 7 p.m by remote technology to consider the applications listed below. Information regarding how to participate in the public hearings will be provided on the commission's meeting agenda that will be posted on the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Application 24-3.1, special exception for a car rental facility located at 4 Liesel Lane, AJGG Realty, LLC, in care of Paul Minichino, manager, applicant, and owner. At said hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard. Copies are on file in the Planning and Zoning Commission's office at the Planning and Zoning Department, 1019 Main Street, Brantford, Connecticut, 06405. Written communications may be sent to the above address or to Planning and Zoning at Brantford-CT.gov. Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission, C. Andres, chairperson. Chuck Anders, Sarah, thank you, Fred. I just will say one thing from the start. Um, if anyone's here on the uh, on the Regal Cinema PDD development, that's the uh, 329 East Main Street, 325 East Main Street. That one we're going to um, continue to our next meeting, which is on April 18th. So we're not going to proceed with the public hearing with that one. We opened it at our last meeting. We weren't sure if we'd get to it this meeting, and the applicant did request that we continue it to our next meeting. So we won't be hearing that if you're here on that one. Um, but with that, then, we'll go uh, follow our, nor our normal format for public hearings, which is that the applicant <clears throat> comes first, makes his presentation. After the applicant is done with its consultants uh, or with it, who's ever presenting, we turn it over to the commission and staff, typically have a summary of a staff report, open it up for questions, comments from commission members, and then when that portion is done, at that point, we open up, we have the public portion. And I'm um, gonna ask Evan to explain how to participate, but we ask that you state your name and address for the record, to make your public comments, make your comments. And uh, after we complete the public portion, then we allow uh, applicant to respond to any of the public comments. Uh, there may be additional questions and comments by commission members or staff. We may or may not close a public hearing, depending on how it goes. Certainly not unusual to continue public hearings over more than one meeting. And uh, with that, uh, Evan, can you explain the process for participating in the public hearing? Excuse, me. Excuse me, Evan, before you start, this is Massimo. Um, 
Is every is anybody else having a uh, a volume uh, problem, or is it just my me? Because I, I I you guys went down real low. Uh, not here. Not I'm here. On. Okay. Anyone else? I nope. can hear you. It's just real low. Okay, let's proceed. Thank you. Uh, sure. So if you're joining us today and you have a computer with a two-way microphone, uh, down at the bottom of your screen, there's a raise hand button. Uh, please select this if you'd like to participate in the public comment. You can also type in the chat that you'd like to participate. Um, if you're dialing in by phone, you can press star nine to indicate that you'd like to speak. Uh, we ask again that everyone please state their name. Recording in progress. Question. Chuck Anderson here. Thank you, Evan. With that, then, we'll turn to our first public hearing item, which is a continued public hearing. This is Brantford Real Estate LLC, care of Ariane Bravella, applicant and owner at 440, 544 and 558 West Main Street, special exception for a used car dealership. This is a matter that we have opened. We've had some discussions about, but it's been continued. And uh, I understand that the applicant has some uh, additional revisions uh, uh, I'd like to present with us. Is the applicant ready to proceed? Yes. You may proceed, Mr. Nates. Okay. So for the record, uh, David Nafis, licensed professional engineer and land surveyor with uh, Nafis and Young Engineers, 1355 Middletown Avenue in Northford, Connecticut. Um, let me know when your screen is up so you can see the the plans. Is everyone able to see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is obviously the, the base plan. Um, <clears throat> what we've done, uh, we've made a couple changes based on the town engineers and the planners' comments. Uh, one of the comments was we've moved the fence to the inside of the retaining wall at the top. We will, you know, in case in case the post in uh, concrete sleeves. Um, and it depends if, if Mr. Prevella wants to do a different type of wall, we may change that as opposed to if he goes with a concrete wall, we can just put the fence right in the wall and bolt it to the concrete. Right now he's doing like a decorative Nicolac type wall where we'd have to put the fence just inside it. Um, we've also, we're also going to stall in the paved area. We're going to put in um, anchored wheel stops. So the cars won't be able to roll over. They'll, they'll have the, the wheel stops will stop the cars from moving forward. Uh, well, let me see where is oh, and, the, and on the one of the bigger things we've added um, in this these areas here, these small area here, and these little random shape. These are very small depressed areas that Mr. Appleton, the landscape architect, had requested we put in, um, and what they're basically are there. There, when water leaves the pavement, these little depressed areas will catch water and allow for the landscaping in that area to absorb that extra water. Um, we've satisfied the town engineer with the drainage. They're going to infiltrate in this area. Um, so we will have just within the site, we will be reducing the runoff currently. Um, and then when you add in any offsite improvements, that'll further reduce the any runoff leaving the site for volume and uh, intensities. Um, other than that, um, those are the big ones. Um, other than that, I can answer any questions if there's anything else somebody would want to talk to, but those are the major revisions that we made over the last couple of weeks. Oh, and the other one, one of the other ones, we, we also removed the striping off here. Um, Cause this is just this area. We, we have, we only show the striping for the, in these areas where the, required parking is we didn't show them in these areas because that's just for car storage even though the only reason why we showed them last time is just to show that a car will actually fit in those areas but so we've removed just for clarity we've removed them so just to these this area in here is just car storage and is not counted as part of any of the parking required for the site chuck anders here thank you mr nafis uh Maybe at this point, I'll turn it over to Evan. Evan, I know you prepared a staff report on this, but I, I don't know if these are new revisions that just came in or or what, what uh, or how you'd like to address that. 
Um, yeah, I'll go through my staff report. Um, they did submit some new stuff to us on Monday. Uh, I'll try to hit on as many of uh, the things that I noted from that submission as, as well as part of uh, the staff report. Um, the, the original staff report had 10 uh, missing or unclear items, questions I had. Um, six of those items were related to the landscaping regulations. I'd like to go over those last uh, of the remaining four. Uh, I think um, the new revisions and the comments clarified uh, all but one of those. Um, and the one standard or question that I had was really a comment from myself uh, about the um, northwesternmost parking space and the navigation in and out of that one. Thank you, Dave. Um, that's actually not really a standard in the zoning regulations. It was more just a comment for myself. Um, I think the applicant stated that they would be having this as employee parking only. Um, but like I said, uh, it's not really a standard in our zoning regulations, more just a comment for myself. Um, On to the landscaping items. Uh, the applicant confirmed that the fence, like you went over, would be at the top of the wall, not at the bottom. Um, the staff report included determinations uh, that I thought the commission would have to make for us tonight, um, or I'd like for the commission to make for us tonight. Uh, they did at our last meeting have a discussion about bringing in a landscape architect and they had Larry Appleton uh, come in and uh, make some recommendations and reviewed their plan for them, uh, which they applied to their submitted landscaping plan. Um, I guess based on that previous conversation, I'd like to get an idea of the commission of or from the commission of if they thought that this landscape professional standard is being met, um, but also section 63D uh, does include the option for the commission to waive this requirement um, if they feel that uh, you know the the plan is um, let's see the language in here um, uh, shall prepare the plans illustrating compliance with the regulations uh, unless waived by the commission due to the minimal impact of the proposed activity. Um, so that is a determination like the commission to make tonight or to have a conversation about um, the front yard landscaping requirement um, is not being met. I think given the nature and the size of the site, you know, that might not be something that's possible to be met by these regulations. Um, the side and rear yard landscaping requirements are also not being met. Uh, we have the landscaping beds that were moved uh, from around the building now being proposed i think they're three feet wide on the westernmost on the west side of the property um so we're not meeting the strict application of the side and rear yard landscaping either um that planting bed was also moved i, I believe uh based on a comment from one of our commission members um so uh next up the green belt buffer requirements um, that section does have uh, an option for um, the um, option for either walls grading or a fence to be substituted for this green belt buffer. Um, if uh, the commission can waive this requirement, if they feel that the intent of the green belt buffer is being served by that fence. Uh, the applicant did update in its newest revision that that would be a vinyl opaque fence after I recommended in the staff report. Um, so that brings us to uh, section 63L, uh, modification of landscape requirements. We have the front yard landscaping, side and rear, uh, planting bed, and that green belt buffer. Um, we would like the commission to make a determination on whether They'll be willing to waive full compliance with these requirements uh, based on that section uh, through the commission finding that excellence in landscaping design has been demonstrated by the applicant. Uh, and if they choose to do so, a condition can be prepared uh, for their uh, for an approval for our next for our next meeting. Uh, conditions or findings can also be prepared for the two other determinations as well. Um, I think that is about it. Uh, the remaining items were all um noted and uh seem to be 
in compliance um, outside of the landscaping regulations. Uh, I think most importantly, the town engineer's comments uh, have been satisfied by the latest revision. I uh, circulated his comments to everybody. Um, so that's about it. So I'd like to have the commissioners maybe weigh in. Let me know if uh, those three determinations are something they're willing to determine tonight or if uh, um, really I'd just like some direction on uh, the conditions of approval for our next meeting. Chair Candace Chair, thank, thank you, Evan. Uh, Mr. Nafis, before we open it up for questions, comments from the commission, do you have any, uh, you or, or your client have any, you know, comments or responses to the questions or the comments made by Mr. Brining, you know, particularly there were um, they mainly regarding, you know, certain the, the landscape requirements. Um, and uh, uh, at this point, um, no, because um, these are, I mean, these are the things Mr. Appleton recommended for us to do. He looked at the whole site. You know, he he asked he asked us to put the some trees along the front, even though you know there was supposed to be a landscape buffer along the front. But he saw with the nature of the business, he thought some trees with a with a little higher canopy would still give visibility without blocking uh, any view of the site. Um, but I, you know, I, I would I would leave I would leave it up to his professionalism on design of the the site. So other than that, I really can't say much. Other than that. Great, great, thank you. I do see that uh, your client uh, has his hand raised. Um, or um, did I see that, Evan? Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Bravel, I think you can unmute yourself. Let me uh, try clicking that. All right, Ari Bravel, the um, uh, the owner applicant. Um, as you can see, we've done we've done as much as work could be possible in this past three and a half years. Um, uh, we didn't hold back on, on hiring, um, you know, local professionals, although some requirements, some were required, such as um, landscape architect, we still did, you know, uh, hire to do our, the best we can here. A um, couple other um, uh, details here, the, um, the, the house, the house is going down, so this is an old house, pretty much an eyesore. Uh, we did the uh, asbestos abatement, so that's ready to be uh, torn down um, to bring less traffic on the street, of course. Um, right, uh, that lot also had a uh, curb cut, which we, you know, we're taking out, so we, we, we're giving that away, um, which additionally will, will lower traffic as well. And although it wasn't a requirement by the town, but it was... Uh, somewhat requested to join these two lots, um, I will, I'm willing to do that as well. So the, those are a couple of things that, that we've done in the past and just wanted to, to, to note. Um, if, if there's any question, I'm, I'm willing to answer, but, um, you know, that's all. Chuck, sure, thank you. Sure, thank you. Um, so um, do, do we have merger the lots as a potential condition? I, I understood the owner is representative he'd be willing to do that was that something that we had um he had recommended or discussed did uh evan uh, yes, I think uh hi, this, is, this is attorney oh. ben connor i'm the attorney for the applicant i can answer that yes as sure. a condition to it we will merge the lots that is something that we are agreeable to and i think i saw in one of the staff reports that that would be a condition to getting a co from the town okay great check in here thank you um, okay, then let's, uh, any questions or comments from commission members or staff before we open up to the public? Hearing none at this time, then let's open it up to the public. Does any member of the public wish to comment? I think we did have one member joining us. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I don't see anyone unless you're seeing someone, Evan. Uh, just to reiterate, there's a, a raise hand button. You can select that if you'd like to participate. I believe the gentleman, Robert, had joined us looking to comment. I'm not sure if he would still like to do so. Yes, he would. Okay, where is he? Yep. Hello, I'm Robert Hedinger. Hi. 
Yeah, okay. so that is a retaining wall you're building. I haven't been here the last two meetings, so. Um, okay, sir, sir, could you give us your, would you mind giving us your address? I'm sorry, I'm not hearing this well. Oh, would you mind giving us your address for the record? Oh, the 19 Bellevue Road. Well, thank you. Sorry, Fred. sorry about that. Um, the, uh, so you're putting a, a retaining wall in the back towards the uh, properties on Bellevue Road? Yeah, it could, right. yeah, if someone could clarify that. This is, that uh, is, you, you live in the back, is that correct, Mr. Correct. Hedder? Okay. So I'm uh, directly behind it, even though the map doesn't show it that way. Okay. So, and, and whether that was a retaining wall and uh, or, or, or some sort of what, what kind of barrier, your, that's your question, right? Yeah, that, I'm like directly behind where the I just where it says, I think like seven, seven Bellevue Road. No, I'm more directly yeah. behind an existing house. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm right about there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, um, I, I can answer that. It's Dave Nafis again. Um, right now, currently, there's an existing wall here that we're not going to touch. Um, we're just going to add a wall here that's about only about three feet high in this area right here. Um, it'll, it'll, it's going to be far enough away that it won't disturb any of these trees. That's what we're trying to avoid. So we're, we're going to leave a big buffer between the wall and, uh, the property line and the trees. And then on top of that wall, we're going to have like an opaque fence, a vinyl opaque fence. So you won't be able to see anything from your side of the, from your property to the front. Okay. Well, that's a lot better than the first plan. Yeah, because I know currently the soil, because of the topography and the previous owners of this property, kept on having uh, trucks dump dirt in, so dirt's like going into my yard now. So I'm concerned about when you start building the wall, make sure you uh, pull the dirt up and not push it down more into the yard, which you, the pictures you would have seen that I sent today. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, Harry Smith, Town Planner? Certainly, uh, here. Um, while Mr. Henniger is here, um, I noticed the fence doesn't seem to wrap around the corner of the paved area. Um, I mean, there are plantings when you get yeah. This is sort of a miss, almost a gap there. Is that right, or am I reading that wrong? I guess directing my question to the applicant. If yeah, uh, I, our plan was to originally run it straight across, and then we're going to put the plantings in in this section. Um, I mean, if we, if if it's a quest, we can always put another little section of fence here. That's going to be, you know, these plants will probably end up coming back a little farther, but we can always put a piece of fence there if it's if that's if that's what you'd like. I think that would probably be reasonable. Just, I mean, I know there would probably is vegetation there, but. Um... I think that would be a, a reasonable thing to do for screening purposes, considering, uh, you know, it's a pretty high uh, standard in the regulations about a residential district green buffer. And uh, basically that's being replaced with the fence. I think probably makes sense to have a, a fairly contiguous um, screening of the yeah. developed portion of the site. Where this uh, silt fence line is, is pretty much going to be the, this will be this, all this area is going to be like the natural Sure. material back here so that'll be you'll get a little yeah. screen and we could put a piece of fence if you come here then you probably won't see anything beyond that yeah i think that'd make a lot of sense to me thank you chuck Kander, chair thank you uh harry and Ms. Mathis, uh and mr henninger uh are there yeah. other members of the public that wish to comment i'm not oh, the only oh, oh, I'm not concerned. oh this is mr henninger yes mr henninger what else um, those giant trees in the back of the property, which is right on the, my property line. And they've been, they're so old. They've been there all my life and I'm 70. Um, I'm just concerned about how they're going to, if, if there's an issue, because I know they drop pretty large branches in my yard down. So is that anything that could be addressed or that's something that, You don't. I don't know. 
I'm just concerned because the trees are huge from my side. I guess from the upper side, people don't notice how really tall they are. Um, I can answer. I could probably yeah. answer a little. Uh, when we had Mr. Appleton out there, he looked at him and he, he told that's one of the reasons why he pulled everything away from the back line is to try to avoid any kind of disturbance or any kind of interference with those trees. So um, he also, you know, he uh, his recommendation is like as normal, you know, from time to time, someone may have to look at it and see if anything is, if there are any dead branches or something, somebody would have to probably prune it back. But his most of his recommendations on our landscaping plan were to pull everything away from those trees so we're not touching the roots or anything like that so the, so the, the trees can just go on living as they are. Okay. They've been here a long time, so I suspect they probably will be here long before after we're gone. Uh, Thank you. Chuck Henshaw, thank you, Mr. Henger. Um, I see the applicant has his hands right. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Prevero, did you have additional comments? Mr. Yes. Prevello, excuse me. Yes, um, Arian Prevello here. Um, Ari, um, just to answer the neighbor, uh, those trees and the the whole property have not been maintained. It's definitely my intentions to um, to maintain that tree, um, keep it there, hopefully. But I'll I'll bring a tree company to to cut the branches, maintain it. You know, usually I do with my other properties. You know, at least once a year. Um, and and in, in the future, just same thing. Communicate with me. I like to be a good neighbor. Um, the, anything that that you know, any branches come down there, I'll I'll bring a tree maintenance company to to, to trim it uh, so so that won't happen uh harry so town planner i just so you know mr bravala there are um since they're located on the plan and are i believe uh larger than 12 inches in diameter uh they're considered by the zoning regulations to be significant trees so um they can't be taken down without the permission of the commission just so you're aware of that if even if they're diseased so um I mean, it's a process to do that it's not very complicated you just basically uh come back in and write for permission to the commission um but um they just want you to be aware of that absolutely and and, and i do agree and i do want that tree there i'm just talking about maintaining the tree yeah i'm sure yeah trimming some some branches on the other side um or or, or looking at branches they're about to come down and just you know take care of them again the, the yeah. tree Property haven't been maintained in a while, so it does need a little clean up. Obviously, I'm I'm going to be doing extensive work. I already started with the house and asbestos abatement, so uh, it, is, yeah. it is my interest for, for that tree to be there and and not to fall any branches, not to fall on any of my cars. It would it would damage my my property and and my neighbors too as well. So I'm just um you know uh, kind of offering and making a statement that I will maintain the tree. Um, and if the neighbor sees any branches that that our concern to address it and I'll take care of it. Yeah. Understood. Check in, sure. Thank you, Mr. Pella. Uh Evan, are there other members of any other members of the public wish to comment? Anyone see anyone? I do not see anyone. I believe Sharon would like to speak. Sharon. Hi. Um, while we're talking about trees and landscaping, I just wanted to um compliment the um applicant on adding the landscaping to the um application i think it's going to improve the property tremendously but i was wondering if you realize that the hollies and the budlia that you're um, recommending are not native and there are native alternatives that you could use in those same places so i would just request that you talk to um i'm sorry about the dog um uh, that you just talk to your landscape architect and see what he would recommend. Okay, sure. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, are there members of the public, other members of the public that wish to comment? I do not see anyone. Okay, great. Then, um, then we'll turn it back over to the uh, applicant and the commission and and, and staff. Um, before I... Um, uh, yeah, Mar Marcy, absolutely. Yeah, well, go um, ahead. You know, I, I, I want to commend them on hiring the landscape architect and, you know, in, in comment about what Evan had mentioned about a front yard setback, 
you know, this is pretty much a non-conforming property and the fact that they're combining, you know, I, I know the landscape architect, Larry, and I think he did a good job of balancing, you know, what was really a non-conforming site and trying to save the mature trees and taking the areas to the east side, if that's, you know, towards Bellevue. Um, and, and those are areas that I think uh, should be encouraged to be naturalized with native species. As far as a, a front yard buffer um, along the highway between the property with view sheds, I don't think it's in the best interest to be putting native plants there because, you know, as you see along in front of the fire station, they often are not maintained and then it just looks very unkempt. So I'm a very large proponent of native species where they can abut large natural tracks. But in the case where it's between a border between the parking and the roadway, I think Larry's made the right recommendation to just have a canopy of trees and not trying to, um, you know, add too much more planting. Although, you know, I, I would, you know, I, I don't see the issue adding, you know, a lower, you know, ground cover that would be easy to man be manicured and maintain there that probably couldn't be native because of the, the habits that they grow with. But um, I, I do appreciate, you know, the growth in the plant as a result of their hiring the landscape architect. And, you know, and because of that, that, in my opinion, deems it as excellence in landscaping, even though it may not fully comply to the side yard setbacks and so forth. He's done what he could to landscape the prop the property in a pragmatic way to make the business work and have the site cleaned up, you know, with the asbestos and all that. So um, that's just sort of my take on the landscape issue. All right. Chuck Andrews chair. Thank thank you, Marcy. Um Question, question about, I, I know Mr. Appleton prepared this and you showed it there, but I don't think we have an actual signed plan from him. Did you, how, how did we get this plan? Is it, it is, I, I'm unclear about that. I can answer that. Um, yes. Ben Connor, again, a, attorney for the applicant. Um, it was at one of our previous public hearings that it was suggested that at a minimum we consult with a landscape architect. So, um, after making a few uh, phone calls, we uh, found Larry Appleton. We met with Larry at the at the site a couple times. We walked around the property with him, and he uh, made a series of proposals and suggestions to us as he consulted with us on it. And those suggestions and proposals from the uh, from him went directly onto the plans that you see before you. Okay, so Mr. Nafe has put him on the plan after discussing it with him. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, Evan, you had asked, you know, you in to, to, to for the commission, you're looking for guidance for commission. What what can you review with us the issues that you need guidance for to prepare a staff report? The hearing's still open, I understand, but you know, we'll we'll have some discussion and then see if we need to ask the applicant any further information. That's why we're doing this now, as opposed to closing the hearing, because we have to close the hearing tonight. But what were your questions, Evan? Um, I had the three determinations, uh, all related to landscaping. One was the architect, landscape architect use uh, that you guys just discussed. Um, the second okay. was- Okay, and just so we can take care of this, the issue is, are we waiving the requirement for a landscape architect? And I guess the answer is we are willing to. The The evidence is that a professional was uh, consulted with and, and the plan reflects his recommendations, although frankly, it doesn't have a signature on it. I think that's that's what the uh, that's what the testimony has been. Yeah, so, and given I, that, that was a recommendation or Part of a discussion at the last meeting. I didn't even know if that is something that's going to be required, um, but I just wanted to see how, what you guys would be most comfortable. Okay, so are we okay with? I guess it's you would say that we're waiving it then because we don't have to sign plan. Is that what you're look looking for, or or what? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is everyone just to go through? Uh, uh are, are we okay then i guess technically waiving it because we don't have the signature although we do understand that it, it does have they did consult which we recommended they do so we're we're good with that is that sound right with everyone 
Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Marcy. The, the regs right now don't say anywhere that if a landscape architect's consulted that that presumes excellence in landscape, you know, that's a natural, that's a natural thing, right? Correct. Correct. No, there's sort of two things. One is, I think one requirement mm -hmm. is you got to have a landscape, you know, unless we waive it, you got to have a landscape architect prepare things. Well, and, that's, that's not in the regs right now. An engineer can prepare it. Oh, I thought it was. No, that that, is, that's no. something I've been, I've been proposing ad nauseum because I think it's so important. This is a, a perfect example of it, but we understand the regs now. They were not required to have a landscape architect, but they did in our recommendation because of some moves that, you know, needed, you know, that were unique to the site. And I think that's, you know, not to get into our regulation discussion, but, you know, there are, there, it's difficult to have very specific regs when, you know, there's a lot of times it's similar to specific regs when there's numerous applications for those regs. And so that's why. Okay. See what, yeah. see what Larry, okay. uh, Larry is highlighting. So I think. Oh, landscape professionals. I'm sorry. All right. My misunderstanding. But that's not a landscape architect. And no, it goes on to say mm -hmm. it has to be a landscape architect. Oh. And additionally, if there are existing trees, a landscape arborist. Okay. Um, which we haven't really got to, just assuming, I think, that there's enough area there um, that's going to be undisturbed around those existing trees. But Okay, uh, maybe I was looking at an older version. I didn't realize that that was a new standard okay. because we're not seeing that on every application. No, we wave at your... You're we're right, waving it. <laughs> so, it's, so it's confusion around the waving. So I, I, okay, I, 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 yeah. I'm clear now. Thank you for that. Okay. So, but, so yeah. we would technically be waving it with the... Un I, I won't repeat myself. So, so we're good with that. So it, they could request. They could request Larry to review it and put his seal on it. I would imagine. We we could ask them to do that. Um, uh, he, he, you know. I mean, since he, you know, whether he drafts the plan or you know, it's it's still his work because it, you know, it's his consultation. So, I mean, to me, that would be the the condition would be to have him notate that he prepared the recommendations for the plan well do we want him to stamp and seal the plan or do we want him to well i don't know if harry can tell me better now that he had the regs up i mean i don't know that he's required to stamp it is he yeah. he could have his name on the plan as well a, i mean technically professional yeah there and you when you go to the requirements for a site plan in the back in the appendix there is a uh, requirement that the landscape the professionals involved that have licenses actually stamp uh seal and or and sign it so okay so we do we do ask for that but in this case i think the applicant proceeded based on comment and advice from at least one of the commission members that they at least consult with the landscape architect so if you yeah. waive the requirement for a landscape architect then you don't have to worry about you know Right. At, at I mean, one point, we were about to waive it. I think it was a three to two vote. <laughs> and, yeah, and then I mean, I think they did it consult, so they should sign you know. it. I guess that's my take. So that there's no confusion down the road that it wasn't prepared by one. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, what the regulations I mean, are Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to inconvenience the applicant any further. I think he's, you know, done exactly what we asked him to do. So, but, uh, you know, I just think that that would be good to be reflected. Well, is the applicant willing to have Mr. Appleton sign the plan, sign the landscape plan? We're willing to request him to do so and hope that he will sign the plan, you know, for us showing that. It's just we did what was recommended from the commission before, which is hire him, hire him as a consultant to uh, – make the proposals that you see on the plans before you and, and not, you know, create a landscape plan and, and sign and stamp it like we're talking about now. So um, certainly, you know, I, I understand the position of, well, he did the work, he did the plan. So show, you know, have him stamp it, have him sign it to sign off on showing that he did the work and that there's no confusion on it later on, like Marcy said, um, but all I can say at this point in time is that we can request and ask him to do it and, and hope that he would follow through on it. But again, my position would be we did what was asked from the commission. We hired him as a consultant and 
did a great job consulting to give us the proposal and make the plans that I think satisfy uh, everyone at the commission and make a much more appealing and aesthetically appealing property that's there. And if I may, I mean, if he needs to somehow qualify or make a statement on the plan as to, you know, that, I think that's useful as well. Um, Mr. Pravella, do you have a comment? Yes, uh, I have a comment. Um, my understanding in the past I think meeting or the one that um, it was, um, we voted on should I uh, hire a landscape architect, I guess. Uh, it was three to two to waive it to, to not hire. However, I still did hire a uh, landscape architect to, to do the work. So, you know, just trying to do above and beyond it. it no lab in us here. Um, that's all. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let's, let's decide this. Uh, do we want to, um, do we want to have a condition that, uh, that Mr. Appleton actually signed the plan or are we okay? that he doesn't, and if he doesn't, then I think that we would waive the requirement because we don't have it. What do you, what do you think, Joe Chadwick? Um, honestly, I do not know the standard of care that is implied by a landscape architect sealing a drawing as opposed to just giving advice. The limit of what the commission asked for was provide advice. We received the advice, we're satisfied with the plan, and I don't know if we want to extend Mr. Appleton's professional duties or obligations any farther than what he has already done by having him stamp the drawings. Um, okay. Not what we asked for, and I, I'm not sure what we're getting for, for the stamp. Um, and I don't know what he's what he's what duress he would be put under as a result of having to do that. Okay, so you're willing to waive the technical signature requirement? Totally. Or, yes. Okay. Totally. Okay, Brad. Uh, I, um, having listened to all the discussion uh, over this landscaping issue, it sounds like we're overthinking the issue. Actually, uh, we asked the applicant, who's been very, very um, accommodating in everything he's been asked to do, and I agree with Joe. We we asked that they consult a landscape architect, and if 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 for us as a commission that's not enough, well, then we'll have to be more careful the next time. But I think when an applicant is going to take a piece of property that is just horrendous, quite honestly, I mean, I think it is. They spent a ton of money there. And he's done everything that the commission has asked. Um, I, I and and you know the amount of landscaping. It's you know it's not a, a mall. It's a it's, you know basically a small piece of property. I, I think he's been so compliant that as commission, I think that's the least we could do is is to waive the. Uh, uh, having a, a, a landscape architect sign. I'm not against that happening, but in this particular case, because he was directed to do a certain thing and never said, I'm not going to do it or he didn't do it. He did exactly what we asked him to do. I think we have to be complying with what we said. We have to be consistent with what we said. So I agree with Joe. I would not require, in this particular case, a landscape architect to have to sign off on it. I think what we saw is pretty good. Um, I think it's a tough piece of property, quite honestly, to do almost anything with. But he's doing the very, very best he can. Uh, I think under a very tough situation as far as the, the landscaping and the layout and everything else. And so I would say, for me, I would also say not to uh, require him to use a landscape architect. Check in this year. Thanks, Fred. Joe Bayuzo, thoughts? Yeah, my thoughts are the same as Joe and Fred. We asked them to get an advice from landscape market they did exactly what we asked them to do and i think we should follow through with that recommendation so i'm i'm i think we should just leave it the way it is with not requiring larry appleton to put a signature on it if he so desires i won't say no to it but i think the applicant did what we asked him to do and i think we should just follow through on it check in your stand. thanks joe marcy Uh, Marcy, uh, we're, we're, oops, you're, you're muted, I think, Marcy, yeah. I'm not saying that the signature should be a requirement to approve it. I just think that 
you know, if for some reason he's not willing to sign it, then we would approve it based on excellence and landscaping. But I just think from a date of record keeping, you know, to have that reflected on the plan that he had some involvement and however he wants to clarify it based on his standard of care, you know, and, and not even necessarily to have him seal it, you know, just so that it's referenced for going forward. If something, if the property should change ownership or, you know, I know, Plans are being pulled out from the 80s that I see as what's been done. And it's very hard to, you know, keep track of who did what when. And that's really the reasoning behind it. It's not intended to, you know, be difficult to um, the applicant because I think he's done, you know, been very reasonable and accommodating. Thank, thanks, Marcy. Massimo, any comments? Yeah, um, just that, um, you know, I feel the same way as everyone else. Um, I think that, you know, if uh, I would think if you ask the architectural landscaper to put a signature on it, um, he just might as well put a seal on it, which means it's probably going to end up costing the applicant a little bit more money and time. Um, I, I think he satisfied what the commission asked. Um, I'd hate to put any added stress onto the matter right now for him. Um, he's done, he's done that him and his team has done a good job. Um, and I think that, uh, maybe in the future, you know, we, we should definitely ask for, um, you know, uh, a sealed and signed, uh, landscape design. You know, okay. um, so that's my comment. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Massimo. Sharon, thoughts, comments? Yeah, um, I just agree with um, what Joe and uh, Fred were saying is that um, this applicant did what the commission requested of him and is improving the property. And we, the vote was to waive the requirements. So I think that it should just stand the way the commission voted it to. And I would just like to... Um, re reiterate again, just trying to get some more natives on the property. So Great. thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Okay, yeah, and um, I agree. Again, the narrow question here, all we're trying to do is give guidance to Evan when he prepares the <laughs> conditions, or do we have to include a finding of waiving? And I think absent the actual signature by Appleton, then the answer is yes. So, and for everyone else, reasons everyone said, yeah, I'm I'm okay with it then. So then let's move on. Evan, you asked, the, there are three other landscaping questions. It's, we have to waive, you know, you, you want to just review, it was waving, it was the front, the side, the, what, what were they that we would have to waive on the basis of exits and landscaping design? Sorry about that. Uh, let me pull up the regs once. again. 6.3 I. Um, so there are two questions. One is it that what is it they don't comply with? It was the front, was it the front side year, rear? What what was it? Um, uh, and and what and number two, what what is the basis for which we can waive those? Or and and I think we know the answer. It's the excellence in landscaping design. But but what is are the specific I think what there was a fence in lieu of the of the buffer and but but just review with us again so we make sure we know what we're recommending to you sure it was the front yard landscaping requirement uh the side yard landscaping requirement on one of the sides they satisfy it on the eastern side uh the rear yard landscaping requirement and the green belt buffer requirement however the green belt buffer requirement does have the option for uh fence walls or grading uh, to be determined to satisfy the green belt buffer requirement uh, if the commission determines that um, it uh, captures the intent of that regulation uh, and then also uh, um, yeah that's it sorry those four things okay okay so I guess well I, I the, the the vibe that we're getting is that it's a difficult site they're doing a lot of improvements. They had a professional, uh, you know, recommend these uh, given the use. It's a car, used car, and um, and and it was professionally designed so that 
for the front rear and side we could you know based on the professional advice probably make that in good faith a finding of excellence in landscaping design and the green belt buff buffer the fence is an option and then it, it appeared appropriate under the circumstances anyway that that would be one way to look at all those but um do people agree with that because <laughs> that that's what we'd end up voting on i would think if, if we went that way um uh joe uh joe chadwick is that what do you think i i, I think that is probably the clearest and simplest route okay great fred i agree okay joe Vayuso. yeah i agree marcy i agree uh well Massimo. i agree also sharon i agree okay and Evan, were there other questions that were outstanding that you were looking for advice from the commission before you prepare your final uh, recommended resolution? Uh, no, like I said. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, then we hadn't closed the public hearing because who knows, someone would have asked a question and we did hear some questions. So, but I think at this point, we can probably close the public hearing. Are there any further comments by the applicant? Hearing none, any further comments by the commission members or staff? Okay, then we will close this matter as a public hearing. This is something that we basically, we're not gonna, we did, we did discuss at our sort of informal deliberations. My expectation is that uh, Evan will prepare a resolution of approval with conditions that we've discussed and findings and that we would vote at that at the next meeting. Um, so, uh, so that, so, so that item number one is closed as a public hearing. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much to the commission. Yes. Okay. So that is item number one. Uh, item number two is, um, North, uh, <coughs> North Main Brantford LLC care of Dominic, you know, Mono applicant and owner that's 17 North Main street uh a special exception for auto body this is one we we opened at our last hearing and i believe the applicant that they they got to go back before the town center i believe and the applicants requested that we continue this to our april 18th meeting is that correct barry and evan okay uh, that is correct okay so item number two then is we are continuing that public hearing to our april 18th meeting Items three, four, five, and six are all the regal site, the uh, stop and shop, owned by stop and shop, the PDD master plan. Again, the address is 329 East Main Street, aka 325 East Main Street. It's the PDD master plan, the PDD site plan, subdivision, and special exception for grading. Again, that was when we opened the public hearing in our last meeting, and we did get a, an email request from the applicant's attorney, Mr. Nuff who requests that we continue this matter to our next meeting, which again is April 18th. So this matter, these matters, I should say, because there's four of them, will continue this until our next meeting, which is also a Zoom meeting on uh, April 18th at 7 p.m. That brings us then to item number seven on our agenda, which is a G A J G G Realty LLC applicant owner for Lisa Lane special exception for a car rental and Harry I understand if it was this application withdrawn uh Harry Smith um unfortunately uh, after the uh the town has spent money in the public hearing ad uh the applicant has requested that this be withdrawn so this application has been withdrawn okay so this item is withdrawn so we can it's no longer pending, so we don't need to have a public hearing. So that then brings us to our minutes. And we have two sets of minutes. I think one which was emailed to us, uh, which was the older one, the revised uh, meetings from uh, Thursday, February 15th. Why don't we start with that one? Um, I don't know if people had a chance to review that. I think uh, Michelle sent that out uh, by email earlier this week. Um, does anyone have any comments on that? And if uh, not, does someone want to make any a motion 
to uh, approve the yes that's, yes I, I, I had one observation um I, I i believe i made an offer to provide editorial assistance not interject comments um interjecting comments has a somewhat different tone uh somewhat less useful tone and okay. it, editorial assistance isn't really required then we can just drop the whole sentence okay uh well or, or or we could uh we could substitute offer editorial assistance for interject comments as you wish okay are there any other corrections uh or changes okay so we'll make a motion to approve the minutes with the substitution of instead of Joe Chadwick volunteered to interject comments to strike interject comments and substitute offer editorial assistance with that change from we'll make a motion to approve the minute minutes Fred, we'll yeah, make, we'll make that motion okay we'll give the motion to Fred the second to Joe any further discussion all those in favor Joe Chadwick Chadwick is in favor Fred Russo. Fred Russo is in favor. Joe Bayuso. Bayuso in favor. Marcy. Marcy in favor. And Chair is also in favor. Okay, so then the second set of minutes was our Thursday, March 21st, 2024 minutes. Anyone have any comments or corrections to that? And if not, does anyone want to make an appropriate motion? Chadwick will make that motion. Joe Chadwick makes a motion to approve the Thursday, March 21, 2024 minutes. Is there a second? Fred Russo will second that. Second by Fred. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick? Chadwick in favor. Fred Russo? Fred Russo in favor. Joe Bayuso? Joe in favor. Marcy? Marcy in favor. And Chair is also in favor. Okay, then. So then that brings us to... Um, Correspondence, anything here? Uh, hang on one second. I don't think there is. Uh, we have nothing new. Sorry about the delay. Great. No problem. Great. So no correspondence. And then as for old business, uh, we have, uh, that's, um, there's two items, they're on one site, so we'd hear them together. And um, we haven't scheduled a public hearing for that. There's um, still, I think, before the town center on that one. But uh, we will schedule a public hearing, I think, you know, under the normal procedure, whenever it's appropriate. Probably second meeting in May is what I think your expectation is, Harry, but we'll see. Okay. And then that brings us to new business. Item number one, we have a zoning proposed text amendment for uh, to remove uh, the 20 for uh, from attorney Brito on behalf of Nuzzo Farms to delete the 20 event limit. So we'll have a public hearing on that. And then uh, the next item, which is number three, but I think it's really number two is an accessory apartment we need to schedule a public hearing on that one so we'll do that and then that brings us into other business and uh first uh item we have interpretation of section 3.7.a one two and three definition of small an animals um who's gonna who's gonna guide us through that uh jane ellis our zoning enforcement officer is here tonight she's calling in but uh yeah she'd like to Take a few minutes and discuss this with you guys. Absolutely. Jane? Good evening, everybody. Um, I would like some help from the commission. I had sent out a violation notice to um, a home in Bramford that um, has two pygmy goats in their yard. I interpreted that as livestock. We have, if you look, um, I think I gave Evan a sheet that has 3.7A. The categories are dogs. And then the second one is horses, cows, pigs, sheep, and similar large animals, which includes in our definition also goats, 
horses, cattle, llama, emus, and ostriches. And the people have less than an acre. They have 0.17 for a lot. And under our livestock regulations, it's a minimum lot size for one animal is one and one half acres for the first animal and then half an acre thereafter for each other animal. So I went out and they have a um, little fencing area with um, kind of like a bigger than average chicken coop um, hut that they've, they've manufactured, built themselves. And they're keeping two pygmy goats. The goats are 17 and 21 pounds. So they might not be as big as regular goats, but they're certainly not small either. And they have hired an attorney to appeal my decision. And they would like the goat to be seen as section three in our regulations, rabbits and similar small animals. And I think that's a little bit of a stretch because when I think of rabbits, I think of rabbits, guinea pigs, hedgehogs, all those kind of things that you can keep in a hut and our regulations allow them and they say a half an acre per rabbit or small animal. And um, I'm looking for the commission um, to give me an interpretation. My interpretation, as I said, was there are now definitions that goats are included in the livestock definition. Goats obviously need more land to be able to run around, and this property doesn't have it. It has less than three quarters of an acre, and we need one and a half acres per livestock animal. Dr. Candace Chair, thank you, Jane. Um, Evan, can you pull up that regulation again, 3.7a? Sure. Um, okay, so there's categories. What this is, is it's about keeping of animals in residential zones, and it divides them to various categories, right? Correct. So okay. one, one, one category is dog, and there's, I think, four categories, right, because it goes on to the next page. There's dogs. There's horses, cows, pigs, sheep, and similar large animals. And then there's rabbits and similar smaller animals. And then there's four is poultry, right? Chickens and other poultry. Correct. Okay. Okay. And so you're so so those are all allowed under you know, for in residential zones, depending on the acreage of the property and so forth and whatever. And so these the someone has pygmy goats which i don't know what that is but i guess it's a smaller goat um they're a small average goat but they're still these two that we're discussing are 21 pounds okay um and and so you issued the cease and desist order and there's been an appeal to the zoning board of appeals is that correct there is yes and okay before we go um, the ZBA in April, I was looking for an interpretation from the commission. Okay. Okay. So that, that's a con. So ultimately it'll be up to the ZBA, whether they uphold your order or agree with the property owner. And it's ultimately their decision because that's the way things go. But I suppose we would want, you know, your, your question is, Hey, did I correctly interpret the regulations the commission think I'm wrong? which case maybe I withdraw my cease and desist or something like that. Um, um, well, my, my take of this was that if you look at the categories um, and we know we're, we can rule out dogs and we can rule out chickens. So it's either got to be two or three <laughs> and the, the categories, it's either horses, cows, pigs, sheep, and similar large animals or rabbits or similar small animals and if you had to say where would this goat this pygmy goat whatever would fit it in would it fit into two or three my reaction would be it would be two because it's like a you know a goat is this seems to be what this is 
horses, cows, pigs, sheep, larger animals, and it's not a rabbit or similar smaller animal. So, so that that so so I would agree with your interpretation based on the way the the categories the, that goat seems to fit in there. Now I don't know. Maybe there's something unique about a, a pygmy goat, or but but I don't know. This it seems to me closer to sheep than a rabbit. Uh, and therefore, it goes within item number two. So, anyway, that's my that's my take. I think uh, if you look at our definitions, also, Chuck, which is section two definitions, it actually says the word goat, livestock, because, oh. and it has has chickens, pigs, sheep, goat, horses, cattle, donkeys, llamas, emus, and ostriches. Okay, so the word goat is used animals. I I In mean. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the word livestock isn't in. I mean, what what they're claiming is that they come within 3.7 a the rabbit since they have enough land to do. If it's a rabbit, they could keep it. They presumably have enough land for that, but they don't have enough land if it's in the larger animal category. Is that what their claim is? Correct. They they would like it to fall into the rabbit and stickle a small animal. Right. Because they they would have the acreage, but again, my interpretation was rabbits and similar small animals would be rabbits, guinea pigs, right. hogs. That, so, I mean that all animals. Seeming the way that they're, I, I mean, I know there is a definition of livestock, and it comes in when you're determining a farm, but I, I don't know if that's directly relevant here because the, the category doesn't use the word livestock, but I think it, you know, it, it probably falls within that, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm just looking at the 3.7a, the other screen that's up there is where does this fall within? And, um, I think it comes within horses, the, that category versus small animals. Anyway, so those are my thoughts. Uh, let's, let's take, take around Joe Chadwick, any thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 I understand the interpretation based on the letter of the law, but I think it's an insufficient taxonomy to inform a decision. Um, I, I, I see dogs that are way bigger than pygmy goats. Um, I don't know the veterinary rationale for how much area a pygmy goat would require to be... Um, um, what's the word I want? To be healthy. Um, and to thrive, as opposed to a full-grown goat, which uh, obviously would require an awful lot more territory. Um, are, is, is the intent of these animals to be pets, or are they intended to be somebody's meal someday? Um, that, that's sort of another question that comes to mind. So I, I, I don't think from a regulatory standpoint, we have enough criteria set up to make an effective decision. Uh, what we have in terms of letter of the law, I think, you know, the correct, the correct judgment was made based on the letter of the law, but in terms of the actual intent and function of the law, uh, I, I think we're on shaky ground. All right. So, I mean, they could apply for a variance too, even if they meet the letter. So, um, Fred, thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that, um, the traditional definition, you know, of the, of livestock. And I, when I think of livestock, I, I think of a farm. I think of not a single goat as a pet, let alone a pygmy goat, but I think of a herd of goats or herd of sheep or whatever. And and I agree with Joe. I, there are dogs that weigh 120 pounds. I mean, they're far greater in size. And so I, I think the, the, the real bottleneck here is the way the regulation reads. I think it reads for a very traditional a, it's a very traditional definition of what livestock are, what a small animal is, and then they list, hey, here are the small animals. But it, it, there's, there's contradictions in, in our own regs, and, and not that we've done a bad job on them, but, you know, people now have introduced uh, um, it, it, pets, you know, birds and things, you know, because it gives them comfort, okay, whatever. So, you know, I, I think we've, we've defined, and uh, this gets crazy when I think about it, we define a rabbit as being a rabbit or a goat as being a goat. And it, and it conjures a certain image that it's big and it's a nanny goat and he's going to buck you with horns. Then someone comes in with a very small miniature version of that, 
much smaller than some of the smaller animals that, that are listed that are allowed. And there just seems to be a contradiction between, you know, uh, our own interpretation of the definition of those words. So uh, I, I, I agree. I think if you want to go by strictly by the law, a goat is a goat, whether he's big or he's small. But, you know, if I was a, a, the property owner, and I'm not, I'm not saying Jane did anything wrong. I think she does a great job. But, you know, I would say, hey, wait a minute. There's a guy next door. He's got a dog twice the size of my, my, my goat, and that's okay. So it's not the big dog or the small goat that's wrong. It's just the way we our, our, uh, our regulations interpret what a dog or a cat or a goat is. And, we, and, and I think the term livestock, in, in probably when these regs were written, there were farms where there was livestock, cattle, monkeys, whatever, horses, goats. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, I mean, we know that pigs, just for an example, could be 500 pounds. And then people have these little, uh, what are pot belly pigs, I think they call And they probably weigh 60 pounds or 70 pounds. So I, I, I don't think, I, I think it makes it very difficult for Jane to, to Look at the regulation and say, this is it, because someone can make a, a legitimate case that, you know, you're, you're defining it by a name, not by a size. For example. Our regulations define certain animals by name, but basically more by size, you know, size category. If you're big, if you got an ostrich in your yard, it's just, too, it's just too big. But if you had a peacock, and, and now people do have those, it's not as big. So where does it begin and where does it end? I don't know. I, I I don't have an answer, by the way. I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, I, I agree with uh, many of the points that Joe made earlier. Uh, I just think that it's, you know... It puts this program was brought to you in part through the support of spot. the Town of Brantford. When someone makes a case that Watch town hey, my, my pygmy goat is much smaller than the guy's Great Dane. You know, it, but that's because what our regulations say. So I, I don't know. Maybe we have to think about those too. And we need another committee on, on livestock and small animals. That's that's it. Thanks, Fred. Uh, Evan, can you put the 3.7a back up? Um, thanks, and try to get it on the screen. Great, because I I don't think the word the word livestock isn't even used in there, so I, I think that's kind of a red herring. Um, Joe Vaiuso. All right, this, this is for me. This is a little bit of a tough one. <laughs> I, I I listen to Fred, and very much Fred says is I think very very spot on. Uh, we're we're sort of like in the middle here. I mean, we're talking farm animals like horses, and that that's that's nowhere near what what uh, th these animals are. And 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 like Fred said, these these are miniature goats, and they're twenty pounds, give or take. And that's just that's even a considered a, a smaller dog or something. I mean, boy, this is a tough one for me to to put it in a category. And I can understand how Jane could be. Uh, in this situation, uh, I give her a lot of credit for for this situation, but uh, I don't think our regulations are, are more are, are more uh, how can I say in tune to to uh, come up with a, a, a definite answer here because we go from a horse to a rabbit. I mean, what what about in between? And and very much thinking about like you said, there's there are dogs that are much bigger than than these goats are, so. I don't, I don't have an answer for you guys. I, I, but I'm, I'm more in tune to be in agreement with Fred. Fred has been saying, and uh, that's all I can say right now. Sorry. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Marcy. Um, do baby goats live in the house? You know, no, they, they live out. They live outside. Yeah, they have a a pen and a wooden structure that they built for them. Right. So, does the half acre provide enough space with the setbacks for the structure and the, you know, to support an animal of that size? To me, that's how I look at the zoning question. And is is there a noise consideration? Like, if there were roosters or something, you know, there's a you know noise consideration. But you know, you wouldn't be able to take a horse on a half acre and Put a barn up and a and a fence area to accommodate a horse. So I would be I'm looking at it more from that standpoint rather than comparing it to an oversized dog. In that regard, you know, 
you know, the rabbit rag made sense because it's a, it's almost like the size of a chicken coop and you can fit it in the backyard like you could a small shed. But if, you know, for me, it, I don't really know what a pygmy goat is or what have you, but, it, you know, is it something that's, you know, you have just one, do you have more than one? You know, is there a, is there a limitation, a number? At what point does it become a, a farming practice or is it just a pet? You know, I think if it were just a pet and and you physically could fence and have enough area to accommodate the goat in the back of the house, then I'm, you know, more apt to be okay with it. If it's, you know, more than one and, you know, they can't, you know, the half acre doesn't give you enough space, then I'm less inclined. So that's sort of where I'm trying to make the distinction on the size of the animal and the type of the animal, regardless of what the animal is. You know, I mean, at what point does it become farming versus residential and need to be in a different zone? Thanks, Marcy. I will. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No. Go ahead, Jane. I will, I will say that um, it was the neighbors that brought this complaint and they are an elderly couple and they're very upset with the situation um, because obviously there's goats are outside. I'm presuming they can hear them. I don't really know what that means. But, um, you know, and again, it's the minimum lot size for livestock, which again, obviously, pygmy goats do not like to live by themselves, apparently. So you should always have a minimum of two. So you're going back to parcel size, which, you know, it's one and a half acres if it, if it, if it passes a live, livestock animal and then a half, um, um, half an acre after that. So you'd be looking at a minimum of two acres and they only have 0.71 acres. And then if it's a small rabbit, it's still a half acre for one rabbit or similar small animals for the first 20,000 square feet of parcel and area and one additional rabbit of similar small animal for each additional 10,000 square feet. So that's, you know, that's where my regulations, that's what I had to work with. And that's why I'm in front of you guys because they're, they're, they are, the name still says goat, regardless of whether they're small. Dogs don't come into it because if you look at the dog regulations, you can have up to four dogs. And that would be anything from a hot dog, sausage dog to a 120-pound cane corso. So that's, you know, that's why I'm here. Thanks, Jane. Um, let, let's just hear, uh, Massimo, any comments? Yeah. Um, I know we're not in, uh, in the business of, of feelings, right? Um, pretty much. And, and, uh, our business is to make sure that the regulations, um, are accounted for, um, the, you know, the, the new thing and, and Jane, I, you know, that was, that was one of the questions. Are the neighbors complaining and what are they complaining about? I, uh, I was recently at a, uh, uh, like a biggie and uh i i took a look at some pygmy goats and and they're super cute and they're not very loud um are they um does this family have children um and and are, is this the children's pets um when they're that small um should or you know look if they were real goats i, I would be like no nah, regulation keep it standard let's you know they they can't keep them but because they're so small I mean, look, there's, you know, people are starting to get exotic pets. Uh, there's rabbits that are 50 pounds, uh, giant rabbits. I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, but there are, you know, and does that stay under the category of uh, what our rabbit uh, uh, reg is, you know? And, uh, you know, but because these pygmy goats are so small, uh, I think our regulations probably have to get tweaked on this um, because people are starting to get pop belly pigs. Uh, pygmy goats. I mean, I, I even thought about getting one. <laughs> you, you know, that's how cute they are. But um, you know, is are they maintaining cleanliness? Are they are they healthy goats? Are they, 
you know, um, are these people doing a, a, it seems like they love their goats because they actually got a, an attorney to come fight uh, the regs. Um, you know, but is it creating a huge dis- disturbance for the surrounding neighbors? Uh, I, I, I don't really know. Um, you know, and it, it, again, it's, it would be hard for me to say, let's get rid of the goats. Uh, they can't have it there because they're not meeting the regs. And, and, and then we had to consider the neighbors. It, you know, it wouldn't be right for me to say right now at this point, hey, let them keep the goats. I mean, I would sort of like to say that. But uh, but if we're going to stay consistent on the regs, I don't think I can. Um, but it is just not a regular goat. It is a pygmy goat. And, uh, and they probably should require less space than a regular goat. Yeah, that's my take on it. Thanks. Thanks, Roswell. Sharon, any thoughts? No, um, I just um, agree with the fact that, you know, the regulations are very vague and don't really cover this particular animal. So um, I think it's um, a very difficult decision to make. Okay. Well, the ZBA will have to make it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, Jane, I know, so you've heard of sort of a variety of of opinions here. Um, So... um, you know, I, I don't know if that helps you or not. I think that the, the sense is that that you that you probably made the right call. Uh, that said, unless there's you know something unique about a pygmy goat versus a goat, and you know, but is it still? I, I don't know. The, you, you, it's still a stretch. But anyway, maybe the ZBA makes that decision. But. Um, I, is there more that you're looking for for us here? You've you sort of heard. I don't want to repeat ourselves again, but you heard a sort of a variety of a different opinions, and a, you know, it, it sounds like it's it's maybe not. It's probably a closer call than I originally thought, but uh, but I don't know what a pygmy goat is. To tell the truth, small goat. So any um, any yeah. I appreciate everybody's input. Um, I. We will go to the ZBA. Okay. I made I made a decision to have a violation notice based on the regulations that we have. Yep. And they're appealing that decision. Right. Okay. Um, Harry, from the town planner, um, I've been listening to the discussion, and I'm wondering if it's fair to say that it seems like the consensus of the commission is the correct call has been made based on the existing regulations, but a lot of questions have been brought up that whether the existing regulations um, do the situation justice and possibly need to be revisited. Um, is that fair to say? Yes. As a summary? Yes. Yes, okay. Sure. All right. So is that something the commission's comfortable with? Um, Going to the uh, being said at the ZBA meeting or not as as a clear consensus, yeah, or clear enough consensus. Red Rusi you got my vote. Marcy, that you said sounds good to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, that's fine. Although we don't know what the new regulation even says. No, no, I mean it doesn't say anything to that situation. The, the, yeah. What speaks to the ZBA is the commission thinks Jay made the right call, and that's the interpretation right now. Is that right? Um, a go to go. Right. She correctly use the tool available. Yeah. As imperfect as it is. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so Harry, what else? Okay. Thanks, Jane. Um, what else is on the agenda? Um, the only thing left is, uh, report from Evan and I, um, I, um, have not been focusing on this a variety of reasons, but, and I did make some, well, there's substantial progress on a following up for the meeting the commission had, I believe, in December um, about the package of regulation issues that um, staff brought up to the commission. I, we think we have a special meeting on that. And um, I'd like to bring a draft package. I'm going to aim for the next meeting. I don't know if we're going to make it, but um, one item in there, I believe we promised the state we would try to get something through as it's a mandated regulation change mandated by state law change um, um, by, I think, I think I said July or June. I think I said July in the letter that I goes wrote for the first selectment. Um, so um, 
At the same time, I'll try to get the landscape committee at least launched in terms of having an initial meeting. Um, but I don't expect that to be taking place for at least uh, you know a few weeks. Um, so I'm saying this partially to uh, set some limits and goals for myself, <laughs> just to keep you informed as well. So um, other than that, I don't think there's anything we really need to bring up tonight. Can you think of anything, Evan? That we see. Okay. okay. Unless it's something somebody else wants to talk about. Yeah, I just have one comment. Um, I the um, the conservation and environmental committee just had a presentation of their natural resources inventory that was redone, and it was in the form of a webinar, and it was really very informative and very interesting. And they said that they were going to post it on their website page on our town website. So I would just encourage um, anybody on the commission to access that. It really uh, was a very thorough discussion of all the natural resources that we have in Brantford and it's an update. So it was really interesting how they compared it to our present state and then what um, the town was like 10 years ago. So it really was a really interesting discussion. Has that document been finalized? Or is it uh, a draft they still? They, were at, in, they said that they were going to be posting, I guess, the webinar right. on their um, on their website, on the town site. So it sounded like it was fairly finalized to me. I don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. Harry, would this qualify as continuing education material? Um, I think yes, but not technically in terms of the state law requirements, but I think it's a great thing for the commission to go through. And I believe, uh, you know, the prior document, uh, we brought that out. I think we had a, an 830G application down at Pawson Park and uh, looked at uh, this natural diversity database as well as... Uh, the natural resources inventory about tidal wetland that was directly adjacent to that, the site of that, uh, it was a very tiny little four unit 830G that eventually, uh, uh, I think was settled out of court. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a very uh, worthwhile um, document piece of information to have. So I just want to point out that, you know, I've used it as staff and I think the commission should be uh, informed about its contents. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, Sharon. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Harry, anything else? I don't have anything else tonight, no. Thank you. Anyone else got anything else? And I guess uh, someone will make a motion to adjourn. Fred Russo will make that motion to adjourn. But motion to adjourn by Fred. Is there a second? Chadwick seconds. Second by Joe Chadwick. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Chadwick. Chadwick in favor. Fred Russo. Caruso in favor. Joe Baezo. Caruso ah. in favor. Marcy. In favor. And Chair's also in favor. So, okay. Good night, Good night everyone. everyone. Everybody. Be, Good careful. Night. Thank you. Be careful in the eclipse. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at brantfordtv.org.